This video demonstrates how quick and easy it is to perform mobile LiDAR calibration and imagery processing within Spatial Explorer version 7. We will start by clipping trajectories to define the intervals where we want to generate a point cloud. We will then calibrate the point cloud, create camera mass, and calibrate the camera, and finally, colorize and classify the point cloud. Let's get started. Our first step is to define the intervals or sections of the trajectory where we would like to generate a point cloud. Do this by manually specifying start and end times by marking the positions on the trajectory and creating intervals from those positions. The next step is to generate a point cloud using those positions. Configure minimum and maximum LiDAR range from sensor, field of view, and any other parameters you wish to apply to the point cloud. Click on the Create Point Cloud tool to specify a point cloud file name and to specify which intervals should be used to create the point cloud. Later in the video, we will calibrate the camera, so it is best to find a hashtag area of your dataset where the vehicle makes perpendicular oncoming passes. Manually create intervals that extend around 80 meters out from the intersection point. After a point cloud is created, you can colorize the point cloud by GPS time and take cross section throughout the dataset in order to visualize vertical offsets and relative swath to swath misalignments and inaccuracies. To resolve these misalignments, we will calibrate the point cloud using LiDAR Snap 4. LiDAR Snap 4 is an automated tool that performs feature matching within overlapping swaths of LiDAR data to determine correction offsets that are applied to the mission's trajectory to improve point cloud relative accuracy. Here you can select which intervals to use for calibration and which position and orientation parameters to optimize. Once LiDAR Snap has finished, a detailed cloud calibration report is automatically generated. This report shows many quality control plots and metrics for you to review. After optimization, we can see that the misalignment has been corrected and our overlapping LiDAR swaths are snapped together extremely well. To further demonstrate this, I'll first fuse the point cloud using the raw, unprocessed trajectory. As you can see, the misalignments are significant. Now let's fuse the cloud using the PPK trajectory. We can see there is a significant increase in relative accuracy, however there are still some misalignments. Finally, let's fuse the cloud using the LiDAR Snap Optimized Trajectory. Even comparing a PPK trajectory to a LiDAR Snap trajectory, we can see a massive improvement in relative accuracy. Testing of LiDAR Snap capabilities compared to other industry standard LiDAR calibration workflows has shown time and time again that the new LiDAR Snap version 4 is the industry leader in LiDAR calibration tools.
The next step is to create camera masks before we calibrate the Ladybug camera. Spatial Explorer makes it easy to create and edit camera receptor masks to exclude areas of the imagery that include the vehicle, sensors, or other undesirable features that should not be included during camera calibration or LiDAR colorization. You have the option of creating brand new masks, editing existing masks, or importing masks from a previous project. After receptor masks have been created, it is time to automatically calibrate the Ladybug camera using CameraSnap 2. Select the camera calibration intervals previously created and click OK to begin camera calibration. Once camera snap is finished, a detailed report is automatically generated showing many quality control plots and metrics for you to review. Now that the point cloud has been optimized and the camera is calibrated, it is time to colorize the point cloud. CameraSnap 2 utilizes the custom mass, surface normals, and occlusion detection for smarter RGB extraction. The final step is to classify the point cloud. For best results, start by running a noise filter to remove any noisy or inaccurate points from the point cloud, which could potentially negatively affect the ground filter. After the noise has been classified, the next step is to classify ground. Choose a ground filter, configure the user specified customizable parameters, configure the input and output classes, and then run the automated classification routine.
Finally, use the Classify on Selection tool to manually classify point cloud features. In this example, a moving vehicle was scanned and we would like it removed from the dataset. The process to remove a vehicle is to first create a profile isolating this feature. Then open up the Classify on Selection window and configure the old and new classes and enable Classify on Selection. Then simply choose one of the selection tools, in this case the Classify Above Line tool, click the starting point and then click the end point. In this example, any class above the line will be classified as a noise class. While exporting this point cloud to an LAS or LAZ file, Spatial Explorer gives you the option to exclude any undesirable point classes from the export. It has been my pleasure walking you through the SE7 mobile processing workflow. This is Corey, signing off.